hate starting videos. <laughs> That's usually how I start videos. Yeah. <laughs> I hate filming videos. I love filming videos. I hate introductions. <laughs> I get so awkward. But I'm here on my channel with Dara. We actually met on YouTube. <laughs> it's kind of a romance story. Yeah, it is kind of cute. Um, yeah. And Dara's just started YouTube. I know. And Dara's channel is all about eating disorders. It's all about anxiety. All about talking about mental health. So you guys would love it. Really love it. I'm out of breath. I'm so really excited. Um, and also, I think you have so much to offer because I know a lot of you guys have struggles with eating, struggles with food, and Dara can really, you really go into a lot of that kind of stuff. So, there's yeah. so much you can learn, I think, over there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of fun vlogs, too. There's a lot of funness over there yeah. on Dara's channel. So, please, please, please go and subscribe, and all the links and stuff will be down below. And thank you. It's just really <laughs> nice to see every day. Anyway, today we've decided to talk about, I'm going to be asking Dara some questions on mm -hmm. how to be a good friend to somebody that has an eating disorder. Mm -hmm. Of course, it's going to vary depending on who you're talking to, mm -hmm. but I think it's very useful because I think maybe people are scared sometimes around mental health and yeah. I want to ask questions mm -hmm. so that we can kind of know how to be the best friend someday with yeah. any kind of eating disorder. Yeah, because I think they are very misunderstood in mm -hmm. general. Like, I don't think people really understand eating disorders as much. They think it's just, you know, I think, like, eating disorders have the stigma of being, like, edgy teenage girls that, like, yeah. just want to skip meals or just want to be a bit thinner or want mm -hmm. to look like other people. But they're actually very, very serious mental illnesses. Yeah. Um, and, like, like I said, I always compare it to, like, alcoholism or drugs. Like, it is a destructive addiction and it, it really is a problem and more people need to raise awareness about what eating disorders actually are yeah. and how to deal with people who have eating disorders mm -hmm. not deal with them but like mm -hmm. how to help them and understand them and also it's okay to ask questions like yeah there's questions that i want to ask dara mm -hmm. to be a better friend and it's it's okay to ask like i would always prefer to be asked how somebody can help me with my anxiety yeah because it's just showing that you care and that you want to do the best thing for them so yeah i'm gonna ask her some questions and she's gonna answer them i am you know i don't mind answering questions about it like i'm quite open about my eating disorder because i've been quite secretive about it in the past and probably in about the last year to six months i've started being more open about it yeah. and i've i've noticed that that's benefited me so much because so since meeting emily like i've become so much more open about my mental health struggles because she's made me realize that it's okay to talk about it um i come from ireland where it's really really hard to talk about mental health um it's just mm -hmm. like being here in edinburgh and like yeah. meeting people like you has made me realize that it's important to talk about it actually yeah and it's really really it's good not to boo no it's absolutely so not. many people go through it and it's so good to be together and not be alone in it and um, we kind of had a brief discussion earlier about kind of do's and don'ts around eating disorders and one thing that dara said is that something really important is that you don't talk about certain things around people with eating disorders that are recovering mm -hmm. things like weight loss and yeah. calories yeah absolutely i think in today's society it is almost impossible to escape that um especially with social media being as huge as, as it is now you know i personally follow you know i don't really follow any weight loss or fitness accounts on instagram anymore but i still can't escape it even yeah. if i don't follow them like it's so hard to escape and although that is something that, you know, I'm just going to have to deal with, it's always going to be there. I think if you know somebody has an eating disorder, it's just common sense, really, not to talk about yeah. weight loss and calories around them because it can be very triggering mm -hmm. for them, especially if they're trying to get over their obsession yeah. with calories and weight loss. Mm -hmm. You know, they need to realize that it's not normal for their life to revolve around that. And I think people normalizing it doesn't help with their problem. Mm -hmm. And it is kind of everywhere. Like, even if you walk into the supermarket, you see, like brands for light products like mm -hmm. you get mayonnaise and you get light mayonnaise mm -hmm. it's kind of just everywhere yeah and magazines like every magazines, single magazine yeah. it's like how do you lose 10, 10 yeah 10, 10 pounds. pounds in two weeks yeah um it's just everywhere i seen one like a couple of months ago that says the 500 calorie diet oh huh? god like the man. 500 calorie diet that's ridiculous that they and that was on the front page mm -hmm. like it's so upset and and it's it, it i think the good thing about having a friendship is that you can rely on them not to just I think just knowing your friends triggers and mm -hmm. knowing there's certain boundaries and mm -hmm. Dara's the same with me like you would never be like oh I was just sick really badly yeah and this is what happened yeah because I she knows know that that would upset you <laughs> make me like ah <laughs> so it's just being aware and being careful and being just consider it and empathetic yeah. to your friend and not speaking about things that you know they'll find difficult yeah another thing we kind of talked about is if 
say somebody was going through a time where they felt like they didn't want to eat at that moment, they didn't feel comfortable for whatever reason, mm -hmm. what, what, should you tell your friend to eat something or should you not? I think there's a certain way to go about it. Like, I think when people, like, it just depends. Like, if you said to me, oh, you haven't eaten all day and I know you're feeling really shit, maybe you should try to eat something. You know, I would, I would see that as coming from a place of yeah. love. Do you know, and that would make me feel good that somebody actually cares that I'm not eating, somebody actually wants mm -hmm. wants me to take care of myself. But I think if you're like, oh, just eat, would you like, you can't do this to yourself, just eat. Like that's very insensitive very, because yeah. it's so much more than just eating. Yeah. Um, it's actually a, a huge mental struggle for somebody and yeah. it takes a lot out of them to actually do that. And I would just want to highlight as well that there are so many other kinds of eating disorders, you know, like yeah. some people can't stop eating. Yeah. So I think it's very important to highlight that we're talking about a specific kind of eating disorder right yeah, now. Yeah, not, is... not all eating disorders in general because everybody's eating disorder is different, so different and maybe they don't have a problem with eating, they just have problems keeping it down. Not eating or, they, or keeping it down. Yeah, right. or like binging, you mm -hmm. know, there is different ways but today we're kind of talking about my eating disorders yeah. specifically. Mm -hmm. um, whereas, you know, I really struggled with high restriction and, you know, not eating yeah. and kind of bulimia as well so mm -hmm. yeah come come from it in a sensitive way i think i think it would maybe do would you say that would be better if somebody kind of maybe offered you something and if you said no yeah take it and do you know what i mean yeah. if somebody says no i don't want that it's just like with anybody if mm -hmm. i was with any of my other friends it would be just eat it just yeah Exactly. If, if more so with you, and I yeah. wouldn't be like Dara to see it. Yeah, exactly. Because I would feel very pressured then, and it would probably make yeah. me very anxious if somebody was yeah. trying to force me to eat something that I didn't feel comfortable eating. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it's something that I need to do in my own time because there's loads of times where like we'll be together and I'll just like spontaneously have a bit of cake mm -hmm. or something like that, and nobody's told me to do that. Yeah. That's come from me, and that's very important because obviously this is an issue that although it helps other mm -hmm. people be in there mm -hmm. and trying to encourage you in a loving way yeah I think it needs to come from you as well yeah. and you need to stick to what's comfortable for you until you can fully recover yeah another question I asked Dara is would you feel comfortable if say we were going out for a meal and mm -hmm. um, that's something that's probably difficult to do yeah would you prefer if I said let's go out to this place or would you prefer for me to ask you how am I gonna word this I'm not wording it very well basically going around going out to eat that's something yeah. that's difficult. Yeah. What would be the best way for me to go about it if I wanted to go out for a meal with you, do you think? You would just, just ask me, like, mm -hmm. do you want to go for a meal? Um, and if I said yes, <laughs> like, where would you like to go? Because I think, um, although this might not apply to everybody, you know, for me, I personally feel a lot more comfortable in certain places. I was telling Emily about recently, I went to Yo Sushi, and uh, me and David sat down, and they sat us down on this kind of bench, and then people we didn't know sat right beside us, like, as close as me and you are now, and that made me so, so uncomfortable comfortable and I actually had to leave because I didn't feel comfortable eating there mm -hmm. um but if we kind of chatted and went to somewhere like because there's lots of places here in Portobello that like we feel really comfortable in um for Emily's anxiety as well you know you feel comfortable what there what <laughs> uh but we you know we feel comfortable in um and that would be very beneficial as well because we would both feel very comfortable mm -hmm. Um, and maybe rather than saying let's go to this fast food restaurant where everything on the menu is probably pretty difficult yeah maybe trying to be more sensitive and more just think about how that how you would feel yeah rather than me saying let's go and get chippy like yeah maybe I can say where would you like to go where would I like to go like for foods that I'm comfortable with at the present minute you know yeah. maybe in the future we could yeah. do something like that you know it's some days I'm fine and I could go for pizza and be absolutely fine with it but sometimes sometimes that's too much for yeah. me that is way too much and I would rather go somewhere that like I could just have a sip or something yeah, like that yeah yeah you know totally and um, something else we talked about and this is this could be good for you and a friend is there's certain things that might make you feel more comfortable mm -hmm. if we were out in a restaurant and you really fancied ordering a panini mm -hmm. maybe I could order it for you and that would make yeah. you feel a bit easier about it yeah Emily actually did this for me recently because we were ordering David uh wanted us to go get him some food and for some reason you know uh, take out it's one of my huge triggers mm -hmm. and it's um I don't want to say anything that's going to be triggering for anybody else without yeah. explaining how I'm feeling uh -huh. but um I just have issues with ordering takeout because of my eating disorder um I hate going on day takeouts and stuff like that it makes me mm -hmm. uncomfortable and Emily actually 
she seemed how uncomfortable I actually was in that situation and she just stepped in front of me and ordered for me and just wee things like that realizing that I wasn't comfortable in that moment and doing something to help me in mm. that moment really really helped me and it made me feel so much more comfortable and it doesn't mean that I'm never going to be able to yeah. order takeout but mm. it just means like you're just being a good friend because yeah. you're there for me in that moment and realizing that this is going to help mm. her until mm. she's ready you know, and just don't judge your friend for things like that's in that situation that's what you needed and that's what you needed to feel safe don't yeah. judge your friends for them needing something that might be peculiar to you or you might not understand fully and um, just, you know, I knew in that moment that that would really help you. Yeah. And that was the most important thing in that yeah. moment. And I think, I know that in the future you will be able to do that. Mm -hmm. But until that moment, I have no problem ordering it. Like, yeah. just any small things you can do for your friend. And also, we talked about just listening. The best thing you could possibly do for your friend who has an eating disorder is to listen to them. Yeah. You don't need to have gone through it and you don't need to understand it. Mm -hmm. Just respect them and listen to them. Yeah, because I think like you've never really had an eating disorder. I know we've had issues with yeah. food in the past. Mm -hmm. Um, but probably not to the extent that no. I have, but it's yeah. made you really understand more about eating disorders. And I think you've really taught me a lot more about anxiety mm -hmm. in general mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it is really important to just listen to somebody and um, it's just to raise awareness that eating disorders are a mental illness just like anybody else. And just like other mental illnesses mm -hmm. aren't rational, neither mm -hmm. are eating disorders. Yeah. Um, and I think as well, an important thing is like, do not tell them things that they probably already know. Yeah. Do you know, like, you need to eat, or you you're know, gonna get sick. You're, you're not, like, this isn't good for you, you know that's bad for you, or you need to eat, or you're going to feel unwell, like, I know that, Yeah. I know that, yeah. and it's the same with anxiety, like, you know the, the rational side behind it, but it's not something that you really have control yeah. over, Yeah. it's just, it's, it's a mental illness, like, it's, You still have your logic, though, you, yeah. obviously you know what you're meant to be eating, but it's not as easy to just... Do it. Just do it. Yeah. Um, but just like anything, being there for them, I think, being there for each other is the most important thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is it for this video. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me on <laughs> and the channel. And the next time I'll be by myself, we'll be with Dara. You can probably vlog with me. Yeah. We'll probably do more videos yeah. together in the future. Like, Thanks very much for watching and I hope that it helped some of you to have some ideas of how you could help your friends with eating disorders. It's been very, very insightful for me and I'm really glad that we did this because now I, can yeah. work, I know how to be there for you more, I think. Yeah, so. and Emily's video is actually on my channel as well. Yeah. Um, we, we also filmed another video about anxiety misconceptions yeah. where I asked Emily some questions. Yeah. It's been an interview kind of day. Yeah, yeah, it has. Um, we yeah, just chat about this stuff all the yeah, time anyway. Do. This time it's just, just in front of the camera. <laughs> um, so yeah, go check that one out too because I think it's really good as well. Mm -hmm. So thank you for watching. Bye. Bye.